what I'm going to tell you here. First, Bitcoin, just some terms. Bitcoin is a specific cryptocurrency. A cryptocurrency is a digital currency based on blockchains. And a blockchain is a distributed system of record keeping. So I'm going to do those in reverse. A blockchain, for the purpose of cryptocurrency, all we need to think about it is this is a way to record all the transactions. Every time I transfer money to you or you transfer money to me, it's recorded publicly on this blockchain. Anyone can go and look at it. It's who paid who and how much every time it's on there. In terms of the technical thing, those transactions form the blocks of this chain. And as Mark said, there's a lot of breakthrough with the blockchain in how can you do this and decide who gets to create these blocks in a way that just doesn't lead to rampant fraud. Right? So that's what the double spending problem that the proof of work solves is trying to allow us to create these blocks, make these transactions in a way that we can actually trust that it's not all just fraud. So what you get at the end if you've got a record of every single transaction everyone has ever made is you also have a record of how much coin we all have. If I transfer two coin to you, the record now shows I've got no coin, you've got two coins. Cryptocurrencies. So we can use this, any blockchain we create, we can create coins or tokens if you like, and they're all going to be kept, all the transactions, and because of that, all of our bank accounts or our accounts on this blockchain, we can transfer them to buy and sell things. In this case, they're little digital tokens. We want to make sure no one's double spending and copying them and sending the same token to two things. Blockchain solves that for us with this technology. And you can use these tokens to buy things like you, just like you might buy things with gold, with cash, or to take some examples that are more like coins and tokens. If you go to a theme park or an arcade, you'll often get to the front gate and you turn up and you give them some money and they give you some tokens or they give you Mickey Mouse dollars or something like that. And then you go and spend those as if, you're, as if they were money. So you can think of those coins, those digital coins or tokens, they're just like that Mickey Mouse money in some sense, right? Just like you can spend Mickey Mouse money with anyone who will accept it as if it was money, you can spend coins with anyone who will accept it as if they were money. Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency. There are now over 1,500 cryptocurrencies, but Bitcoin was the first one. It's also the best known one. It's the most widely used one. It's number two is Ethereum, number three is Ripple. There's a lot of these. People have tried to create these before. This wasn't like someone turned, called Satoshi Nakamoto turns up in 2008 and just does this out of the blue. People have been trying to do this for decades. Failure after failure, something would go wrong. They couldn't deal with the fraud problem. This blockchain is a technological advance that deals with if there's not one person making the decision on what is and isn't a transaction. When you transact with your bank, your bank says this one's legitimate, that one is fraud. With the blockchain, there is no one person there that says this is legitimate, that's fraud. It's the <coughs> algorithm that's baked into the code of the blockchain. So this technological breakthrough based on proof of work meant that this was possible. And so now we have this cryptocurrency. But in practice, then, we can use it like we could use any other token to buy and sell things. <laughs> So you don't invite an economist to talk about something like this unless what you want them to talk about is money. It's a very bad stereotype of economists and almost insulting, but I don't want to disappoint, so I'm playing to it. Um, is it money? That's kind of the question that I want to talk about today. Or well, this is the question that I'm going to talk about today. Hopefully it's the one you wanted to hear. <laughs> Is Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general, but I'm just going to focus on Bitcoin money. Now, there are a lot 
of ideas of what makes money money and what makes for good money. Three main ideas, store of value. If I have $100 this year, it's still worth $100 next year. That's what store of value is saying. Unit of account, we're not really gonna worry about this one today. It's just if I ask you the price of something, you tell me how many dollars it is. I don't say how much does that car cost and you tell me the answer in the number of apples I'd have to give you in exchange, right? You could, but it'd be a bit weird. So unit of account though, let's not worry about that one today. Third one, medium of exchange. If you and I want to make a transaction, we use New Zealand dollars. If I want to buy something from you, the first thing I go to is a New Zealand dollar. Is, so these are ideas that we want with money. I like going in reverse, so I'm gonna go in reverse again. Medium of exchange. Is Bitcoin specifically a medium of exchange? So Bitcoin, because of the way that it's coded, at most you can do three to four transactions per second. Now this sounds like a lot, but to put it in context, these are credit cards are processing 30,000 transactions per second. I don't know if that's just the US or worldwide. In some sense though, there's an easy technical fix to at least most of this, this is baked into the code for Bitcoin, but you can come up with other cryptocurrencies people obviously have, and some of those allow for a lot more than this number of transactions. So these technological ways, whilst Bitcoin is not a medium of exchange with three to four transactions per second, or at least not a very useful one, other cryptocurrencies can and do largely solve this problem and theoretically they can get very close to the kind of properties that we're seeing with this kind of number of transactions. At the worst case they just need a bit more computing power to be able to do that. There's no deep conceptual reason why you can't do this. There is a little bit of a wait time on them and it's a question also of how short you can get the wait time on processing a transaction. But so while Bitcoin is failing this, cryptocurrencies in general, the solution at least is conceptually known. Store of value. So if Bitcoin was a good store of value, which is to say good as money, it would be roughly the same, worth roughly the same next year as it is today, right? I want money to be something I earn my salary in, I leave it in the bank account till next month. I want to know that it's going to be worth about the same next month. If this was a good store of value, we'd see that the amount that the money's worth wouldn't really change. What you can see, this does not, at least to my mind, look like a flat horizontal line, right? <laughs> that would be a bit of a stretch. You can also see why it became such a big thing around the end of 2017, and this here is sort of December, January is around here. The price went up a lot. This is the total market cap, but the price will look, if a graph of the price would look almost the same, it's gone down a lot since. This spike here is also huge, it just looks tiny compared to the rest. So Bitcoin's not very good as a money, it's not a store of value, it's not a medium of exchange, that's two of our main sort of criteria that it's not. Um, it looks more like digital gold than digital money. You can transfer in and out of it, but it's not hugely useful in making transactions. Its value goes up and down quite a bit. It's often used for speculative, quite speculative purposes. It's often seen as a safe asset. Like if things are going badly in the world, buy gold, right? Because if the stock market collapses, your gold should be good. Same kind of thing with Bitcoin. Or that is my view anyway. So one sort of looking to the future, I've said cryptocurrencies, the medium of exchange thing seems to be largely technical. In principle, it's easy enough to solve, but can it solve that store of value? Can you get a cryptocurrency that holds its value over time and therefore we can actually use as money? Um, that's not clear. Let's assume that we did get one, what would happen? Well, economic theory suggests it will replace bad money, something like the Venezuelan Bolivar. Inflation in Venezuela looks like it's going to be 1,000% this year. 
that's not a good store of value. Cryptocurrency, even with that massive spike, a cryptocurrency can beat that, right? Or something slightly less than that, cryptocurrency can beat it. But the economic theory suggests it's not going to replace good money, which is the fiat currency with the properties that I mentioned earlier. And the New Zealand dollar, a US dollar, a euro roughly look like that. Fiat currencies have some other advantages, like that the government accepts them for you to pay your taxes. Government doesn't accept Bitcoin, right? And so unless they change that, it's not likely to change. 